Hey guys, so in today's video I wanted to read the application essays that got me into Harvard um, and I didn't want to blabber on for too long at the beginning so I'm just going to jump right into it with my Harvard essay. So let's go. I am undeniably determined. Ever since I was a little girl I had always wanted a pet cat. Unfortunately, my parents were adamant that we would not be getting a cat due to my father's rather suspicious case of asthma impracticalities of keeping a pet and the responsibilities it would entail. I promise I'll feed it and keep it clean and take it to the vet all on my own, I vowed desperately, repeatedly as a child. Sorry daddy, it's just not happening, was forever my father's response. Instead, I was granted endless bowls of goldfish and even hamsters that fulfilled my desire to be a pet owner, albeit briefly. As the years passed, my yearning for a fairy bundle of joy never ebbed. So, three summers ago, I embarked upon my quest to convince my parents I was worthy of a pet cat. I knew the odds were stacked against me, but I figured I'd rather try and fail than not try at all. My initial sparse and subtle hints soon grew to daily pestering, but to no avail. It dawned on me that I would have to prove I could maintain a pet. Thus, the summer break saw a noticeable increase in my work around the house. At any given moment, I was cooking, cleaning, tidying, or sweeping. And in the evenings, I continued researching all there was to know about cats, from the best type of kitty litter to how to clip their claws safely. Gradually, with every shiny window and spotless dish, I saw cracks appearing in my father's facade. I felt, I felt close to success. There remained only the task of convincing my mom, my mother, <laughs> my mother, the notoriously stubborn figure of authority, after also successfully recruiting my brother and sister on my mission to adopt a cat, I knew my mother would eventually come around. By the end of the summer, I had accomplished the impossible. I was to become a proud cat owner. When the Saturday came that I walked into the adoption centre to pick up Bubbles, the newest addition to the family, I couldn't have been happier. This was the first time in my life that I had devoted myself wholly to a cause and somehow managed to succeed and reap the rewards. In hindsight, I am proud of myself for persevering, despite being told absolutely not on so many occasions. I realised then that if I dedicated myself to something, I could achieve even those feats that initially appeared to be completely lost causes. So, last year, as the fear-inducing higher education family talks began, my long set-aside childhood plans of studying in the US started to creep back into my peripheral view. I wondered whether this radical idea could come to be and whether I could once again dare be impossible. At first, I suppressed the ideas of even considering studying in the US. Everyone around me had told me it was unfeasible, a waste of time, and I'd be better off staying put. It is not in my nature to back down, just because I've been told to do so, but I began to downscale my plans when those closest to me were pressing me to see how slim my chances were. Even if I succeeded in gaining a place, I wouldn't be able to finance a US education. My visions of experience a holistic American education felt like a balloon flying further away with every negative comment. There came a point when I had to ask myself what I truly wanted. Sitting alone one autumn evening with bubbles purring in my lap, I mulled over my beliefs. Was the so-called impossible achievable, I thought to myself. Looking down at my cat, I felt the same determined fire flare up in my chest. Surely you can't say something's impossible until after you've tried and failed. The path then became very clear. I decided to ignore the doubts of my friends and family and, without the fear of failure looming overhead, commence the journey of pursuing my ambitions. With every information session, college fair and seminar I attended, the concerned comments of my parents began to morph into a quiet understanding that this was my mission. Congratulations, Danny, my father said as he hugged me. After I'd announced to him the news I'd been accepted as a Southern Trust US program candidate when he got home from, late, from a late shift at work. Maybe you were right. Sweeping bubbles into my arms, I sat down to handle the eager bombardment of my family's questions about the opportunities unfolding in front of me. It's so nostalgic to read that because I remember writing it at the time and being like, this is either amazing or like really stupid. Comment down below which one you think it is. There's no right answer. Um, I do think that getting bubbles was a huge moment for me and I don't want to keep I don't want to make this video really long if you guys just want to hear the essays so comment down below if you want a whole video about how to go about 
deciding what to write your essay about or what I would recommend doing. So like, you know, just some general tips for the essays. Um, it's just so weird to read that because I still think that's very true, especially, you know, given some of the stuff that's happened more recently, I think this essay is like still very true of who I am. I can hear my voice in it, you know, so anyways, that was the Harvard supplement essay. I'm going to go into the common app essay. So why don't you come along with me? Every common app essay has a prompt, I think. So this was the one that I chose. It was some students have a background, identity, interest, or talent that is so meaningful they believe their application would be incomplete without it. If this sounds like you, then please share your story. And that's the one I went for because I felt like it was pretty broad. All of them are pretty broad, so yeah. Um, so I'm just going to read it. Trembling. From my cold fingers to my dry, chapped lips. A quivering sensation had seized control of my body. I was scared. But of what, I wondered trying to remind myself that I was already here at the London finals of the Rotary Public Speaking Competition. Lifting my eyes, I met a room full of attentive faces, all bearing the same expectant expression. Amongst them were my parents, smiling proudly, a pesky camera peeking out between my father's hands. At once I felt at ease. A wave of calmness lapped over the tremors, appeasing them, allowing me to find my voice. You are capable, I told myself, inhaling deeply. Let your voice be heard. These quakes of fear had featured regularly in my early years. Cast as an angel in the annual nursery nativity play at five years old, I still remember the ominously bright Christmas music blasting through the hall. I stood stock still, lips welded shut to prevent the shaking from materializing in sound as my friends chanted in perfect unison. Searching the crowd for my mother and father, I wit witnessed their optimistic smiles fading into confused, embarrassed lines. Later, as, my parents as parents accompanied their children to the refreshments area, my teacher approached my mother and father for a word. <laughs> that very evening, later on, my parents confronted me. Why do you refuse to speak in clause? My father commenced, his eyes unwavering. You always talk to us. What's different at nursery, my mother followed, searching my eyes for a tangible answer. I hadn't thought much about my staying silent. I remember feeling self-conscious at the sound of my voice. Still do. <laughs> my ideas seemed unimportant. In class, I preferred to listen to my friends ramble about their fascinating lives, trips to exotic lands and irrefutably adorable pets. What could I say that would compare? As a young adolescent, I dreaded having to speak in public. Standing in front of everyone and trying to engage them, it couldn't help but feel completely exposed. However, the first time I dedicated an entire weekend to preparing my talk, I felt an urgency to voice my thoughts when I found myself once again standing in front of my class. The quivering ebbed as I began speaking. Enunciating every word and establishing eye contact with my peers, I sensed a power unlike anything else I had ever experienced. They're listening to me, I thought wondrously, aware of my lips moving with conviction, my spoken words the only sounds piercing the classroom's unusual silence. Suddenly I realized that I had a voice. Furthermore, it was a voice people cared to listen to. As my classmates applauded me and the school bell signaled lunchtime, my English teacher congratulated me on my speech and offered me an opportunity to compete in the Rotary Public Speaking Competition. Exhilarated, I accepted. The confidence and authority I had commanded in presenting my class speech felt like a major achievement. I've since used my newfound skill to advocate for the political art club I launched at school last year and developed it through participating energetically with our model United Nations team. One person's voice can have a real impact. Expressing myself in front of my parents and a room full of strangers at the Rotary competition, I felt strong. The judges seemed irrelevant. They blended into the sea of faces on that day serving only as one reminder that I was being heard. Soon afterwards, as I ascended the awards platform to receive the Best Speaker Award, I felt comfortable striding onto the stage with a confidence I could only have dreamt of before. Hearing my name announced, I was overwhelmed by an unstoppable sense of pride for having overcome my fears. Blinking, I accepted the award, thanking the judge, the judges and audience for their respect. Then, holding the plaque, I glanced out at my parents and met their smiles with my own satisfied grin. Awesome! So that was my common app essay. Um, 
yeah, weird to read that again because that memory feels like so long ago. Um, again, like I said, I didn't want to make this video super long, so I'm not including tips and tricks about, you know, what you guys might want to do when you're writing your own essays. Um, I hope that this served as a little bit of inspiration. So if there are any questions that you have about the essays, then please like comment them down below and I will try and respond. I'm generally pretty good at responding and I am checking my YouTube like way more frequently. And if you do want a video about how to actually go about writing them, then also let me know because maybe I can just address all those questions in a video. Uh, yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you around soon in my next video. Be sure to give this a like and please subscribe, especially if you found this helpful. Um, kind of gives me a sense of which direction I can take this channel in. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye!